All right, hello and welcome. We're glad you're joining us tonight. We're here at Faith and Victory Church, and that's uh, welcome you to be with us tonight. We're talking about in a continuation of our series on preparing to do the will of God, and one of the things we've been talking, or the things we've been talking about, is Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen, where it says, "If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, um, I will turn. I will hear from. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin, and I will uh, heal their." land right to bring the people in we we got to, we got to think beyond having physical need met we got to think in in, in uh, uh the the construct of doing and getting and accomplishing what god desires and that is winning the lost into and bringing them into the kingdom okay and so uh, that is that is important for us to do it is essential for us to do that is our main ultimate goal all right but in doing so what he wants us to do is um, he wants us to get those other things straight. Humble yourself, seek, pray, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways. Then he says in the word, he's going to hear from heaven. And remember we talked about last week, we kind of got to the, we drew the little eyes and said God's eyes are running to and fro through all the earth, looking, you know. Uh, he's looking, he's looking for the people. He's looking for their lives, amen. Um, and then he says he will forgive their sin. And I think I left. Let me see here. Hopefully, I'm back. I think I left off a page of my notes. Where are the rest of my notes? That's not them. That's the other summer. That's Sunday sermon. All right. Praise the Lord. Glory to God, grabbed him and thought, you know, I did, you know, praise God. Should I? Hallelujah. No, that's, that's it. That's it. That's it. I thought. Is the ears running? Through? And then the second thing he said, because we, we, I know we kind of covered that hearing from heaven a lot last week. Here. Second, he's going to forgive. Why is forgiveness so important? Hmm? Okay, relationship. All right. That, that, I mean, that's true. That is true. Um, confidence, okay. Focus on love. Now, why, all right, why would confidence be important? Look, look, look at John 3. Okay? Here, here's, this, this is, you know, why is this important? First John 3. Um, 18, we can go through 24. We can, just, we can just read through all that, okay? He says here, he goes, um, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Wow. In deed and in truth. In action. And hereby I know we... Shall assure our hearts before him. Can you say amen? Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now persuade. Shall persuade or assure. Or assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us not, I'm sorry. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our than our heart and knows all things. We ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in Him. So <clears throat> this is the only commandment. This is the one He's writing about at that moment. You can't go say, "Well, First John three, verse twenty." Three says, this is his commandment. That's it. There's no other commandment. 
If you ever read the Bible, Paul talks about there are different things he says are commandments that are not this. Uh, there are not this. Okay, it's the commandment that John is. Okay, and how did he give commandment? Uh, the rich young ruler who came to him, how do you read the law? He said, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. Remember what Jesus said. He says, on this hinge all the law and prophets. And he gave his that he abided in us by the Spirit. When condemnation comes, sin is a separation. It separates us. It, it, it puts something in between us. And here we learn from the we seek his face and we 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 turn from our wicked ways. He what he hears from heaven, he forgives our sin. We can't have this. Why? Because if our heart condemns us, okay. Convince yourself that, there's nothing, that you shouldn't be condemned about living in sin. That's not how you get rid of the condemning heart. The condemning heart saying, that's wrong, that displeases God, that dishonors God. I feel, I, I'm, I, I feel wrong in my heart for doing this. Well, there's a reason you do. Because it, it, it's against who he is. He's God. And what we, we, we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now you're making pleasing insight is that you accept grace. your theological narrative into everything when you say stuff like that. It tells you to live. Paul even wrote, said, put off the old man and put on the new man, which act living in a difficult place, but at the same time, not to ensnare them in a lie that says it's okay to live in that. Your heart's just going to keep condemning you. It's just going to keep uh, going contrary. To, it's going to work against you because you're going to want to come before God, you know, but there's no assurance. There's no confidence. You're, you, you're, uh, you're having these these. Uh, emotional or you know even spiritual uh, drawbacks because I'm going in the presence of God that I got sin in my life I got this in my life I'm not I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing and and I feel guilty oh you shouldn't feel guilty um, well your heart knows you sin doing the right things. To come and tell you you're a dirty, rotten, low-down, good-for-nothing sinner because you did that. It's not how we fix it. Not because he doesn't love us. Not because he kicked us out the front door when we sinned. But because we have a heart issue going on here. Okay? We got a heart issue. Assuring us. change into confidence. 
So from condemnation to confidence. Well, what happens when we get into confidence? There's a reassurance. We're assured. We're persuaded. Assured. All right. <laughs> what? Toward God. We have a confident, assured, persuaded heart toward God. Okay? And what happens? If our heart condemns us not, okay, so condemns us not, then have we confidence toward God. And, and, and look at what he goes on and says here. And then have we confidence toward God. Heart condemns us not, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Um, or if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemns us not, then have we confidence toward God. And this is what he says in verse, two, verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, God, we receive from God. Okay. When there's no condemnation, people are going around saying, "Well, God's not condemning you. God's not putting you down." Has experienced. God's realm is sin. And it's sitting there with that there, and it, it, it knows it's not of God. And so condemnation enters in. It doesn't mean that God is doing that to you. God's not just, if our heart condemns us, God's greater than our heart. What's that mean? What's that mean? He's got an answer for it. I said, he's got an answer to fix that. And it's not, don't feel guilty. I, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I mean, it's like telling married couple, you know, look, look, you guys, you guys are, are living. You've got to mend that relationship. Just can't walk in the back of the room the next time and go. You're going to mend that relationship. Forgiveness has to take place. And then you didn't get it taken care of, and you come into a room with them, or you. So you. you Same that happens in the heart of man when. He God's on your side. He he wants. To have the you that's stupid well you just you stupid I like asinine better this sounds more forceful okay <laughs> so so when you got into that sin now what you you've got a broken um sense of acceptance in his presence he's not going to reject you as a matter of fact he says in the book of um um hebrews he said let us come boldly to the throne of grace in the time of need why because he's here to mend the If there's a brokenness in your relationship, it wasn't God doing it. 
And so he's standing there with open arms, and he gave us 1 John 1, 9. And again, but he mends the breach of your heart. The breach of your heart gets mended so that now you once again have confidence with him. You're the one walking into the event or party with, you know, with the whatever against the person that you had an argument with or you uh, said something about or whatever. And it's going to stay there until you get it straight. Now, unlike high school friends or college friends or work friends or whatever kind of friends you may have had in life, that when you did try to get something straight, they would, they would never talk to you again. That's another human. God is love. He is He is. That he is love. He's not just doesn't just have love. He is love. Okay. And this, remember, this is you know this is written in the book of First John, and we've talked about this before. But our first, our main themes of First John is God is life. God is light. And God is love. Those are the three main themes of First John. Okay. God is life. God is light. God is love. Okay. He is those things. He doesn't possess them. That's what he is. Okay, and so love is waiting for you, not so that he can, you know, so that he can now bless you again. The blessing got cut off because of con come to forgiveness. Okay, we have to share it again because we just got back up. <laughs> I guess. Uh huh. So it's them. All right. Let's see. I'm trying to get us back on. All right, so this is why when he says here, if, they, if they'll turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from him. I will forgive their sin. Now we can come for God. We can come and we can be bold. We can be confident. We can have assurance that he's going to hear us. And he, what's he going to do here? Because now we're a people of great assurance and confidence. He's going to heal We can now approach God with a great confidence. We can approach God in a way that says, um, I'm believing what? The Lord of the harvest. What's he doing? He's sending forth laborers. I'm asking for laborers. At all the junk that the devil's trying to do to my country and to my land and the place that I live, um, I'm asking for God to restore it. Amen? I'm asking for God. God, I'm asking you, bless my land. And, and we have a confidence because we see the sin, we see the degradation, we see, well, I don't live that bad, but see, your heart will condemn you if you're just living in, in, in little sin. Okay? It's not the biggies. It's not the big sin. It's a little stuff, you know? Isn't that all right, Pastor? Isn't it okay? Nope. Okay? All right? It's not okay. It's, it's just not okay. All right? And so, um, praise the Lord. All right. 
we can, we can come. He says, now, I'm going to hear from heaven. I'm going to forgive your sin. This is why he needs to forgive us for our sin. Now we come in confidence, full assurance, and we ask he's going to heal our land. We're going to be praying the Lord of the harvest send forth the laborers. We're going to get um, the heathen. Old Testament scripture says that he'll give us the heathen for an inheritance. Now, we, we spend a lot of time wanting to believe God and get money and have wealth and storehouses of, of finances. But here is the most important thing we'll receive. Receiving the heathen for our inheritance. Taking people into heaven. Getting them saved. Um, I, I try to tell people, I get, try to get people to understand. You're sitting around, you're going out, and, 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 and you're living lifestyles that the Bible tells us not to live but you're free, and you try to go to the sinners and tell them, hey, I, I do all this too, and I'm, I'm still going to heaven. Uh, you're not, you're, they might go, yeah, that's cool, man. That's just the devil sitting, that's the devil, and I'm agreeing with you to keep you living like that. You're not, you're not going, you're not going to be able to effectively reach them when you're living in sin. Okay? You're going you're gonna to cut off your venue. You're cutting off your ability to reach them. Now, the most sinless man that ever walked the planet ate with the publicans and sinners, didn't say he was a publican and a sinner. Now, he could go and sit with them and minister to him, and they just were amazed. They, they, just could, they were astounded at his doctrine. They were not astounded at the fact that he dressed like them, acted like them, talked like them, cussed like them, drank like them, caroused like them, uh, ran around, slept with everybody like them, did all the stuff that they did. He wasn't doing any of that stuff. That's not, he, they weren't drawn to him because, you know, I, mean, I, I know back in what, the, six, the, the uh, 70s and 80s, uh, particularly the 80s, uh, we all tried to act like, you know, everybody wanted to, you know, back then, um, I forgot, you know, had to dress like the world, act like the world. We had to, you know, do everything the world did because we had to reach the world. What we were doing, we were, we were trusting we were trusting in our attire to do what only the anointing of God can do. Amen. And that is to break through to the heart of man. I can tell you, you can be a country bumpkin and go minister to the hardcore uh, rocker or uh, millennial uh, tattooed lizard man, whatever, with the anointing and accomplish way more than trying to be look like a You don't have to cut holes in your cheek and put spaces in there and have these big holes in there to reach people who are, listen, this is self emaciation It's demonic. It's a demon. And acting like a demon is not going to help people who are demon-possessed. They need to be free. Hello? They're, 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 they're having identity phobias, uh, uh, dis, dysphobia. Uh, what, is it dysphobia? Like gender dysphobia? And not, that's not, it's not, it's not phobia. Um, there's a term for it, and, and it's you can't you can't identify properly. Um, it's, but it's demonic. Okay, so dysphoria, dysphoria. Okay, you know when we have these kind of things, it's demonic. It's demons. They can't look at themselves and see themselves uh, normal. Or, or they can't see that normal is good. They see it as, as weird, and they, 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 want to, they have to morph into this other thing. That's, a, that's demonic influences. Okay? Acting like the world to win the world is not going to win the world. We're going to win the world by walking in the anointing and the power of God. And if we're going to walk in the anointing and the power of God, we can't have this. We can't, be, we can't have condemnation. We can't be condemned. Okay? Because what we really want is God to heal our land. We want God to move in our land. We want God to bring, that. we say revival. We don't need revival. We need, we need a move of God that brings the lost in. Okay? Revival is for the church. So this is all, all the other, you know, uh, uh, which, uh, humble yourself, pray, seek his face, and for, turn from your wicked ways. That's revival in the church. Then God comes and he hears and he forgives the sin and then he heals the land. He brings a move that ministers to the lost. Amen? 
I mean, we, we call it, you know, the Great, the, the, the great Awakening Revival. We call these things revivals, but they weren't a reviving because that means you've already been there. Okay? It's an actual a move that, that brings masses into the kingdom. We want, we want the masses brought in. We want the move of God. Okay? And so it's, it, but it starts with the church. How are we going to ask for the heathen when we're acting like one? And we're not even going to be confident to go to him if we're acting that way. Our interruptions, we've been having some uh, connections. limited bandwidth issues all of a sudden and we're having some we're having some real problems uh, being able to stream live so we apologize if you were able to get anything out of that we, we bless you um, we hope you did <laughs> um, sometimes I get frustrated because we know we're putting out stuff that's really good that that people could need to hear and and then it gets chopped up it's the devil um, yeah hallelujah all right so thank you for joining us tonight amen praise the Lord so what are we going to do we're going to we're going to humble ourselves. Remember, humble ourselves meant to submit. Be brought into subjection. Pray, intercession. Again, literally, Hebrew lend to the idea of intercession. Okay? Um, seek his face. Find his heart. And turn from our wicked ways. When you have the heart of God, you can't walk in wicked ways. That means, that, listen, I'm going to say something. It doesn't mean you're not, you're also not saved if you're having issues. But you can't really find his heart and walk in his heart when you're living in, in wicked ways. And the further you go down that path, the further you're going to walk away from his heart. Okay. So he says when you do turn for the, you do those things, he's going to hear from heaven. He's going to forgive your sin. And he's going to heal the land. We want God to move. Sitting home fussing about which politician is doing what, which politician is not doing what, and who should be the right politician ain't going to fix it. We know they're, they're rigging elections. They're trying to turn stuff. Church. Like these different politicians are their savior and they're and voting for people who are for things that are not only anti-God, they're heinous. They're going to give them something in return. They're going to get something in return out of it. Some kind of political justice or social justice or equity justice or all this other justice. Well, you're living in a world of follow me. You're not going to get all the justice you want here. The only one you're going to get it from is God. He's the just and the just are fire them that believe in. And, 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 you know, you're not going to, and you're not going to get it all on this planet. So forget that idea. Stop voting for people who cut babies up and, and pull them out in pieces out of the womb. My God, I mean, we just, the, the church is in such a, a bad state right now, it, it, it's disgusting in those, in those areas. And I'm going to tell you, if we're going to have a healed land, we're going to have to get rid of some of this junk. We're going to have to fix some stuff in the church. Yes, we're going to have to repent. We're going to have to get that right. And God's going to hold up, he's going to hold this stuff accountable to the church. We didn't do our part. We didn't do the right thing. Amen. All right. Well, we love you. God bless you. Remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Sunday morning, about oh, around 11 o'clock, we go live. So we're looking forward to seeing you then. Until then, be blessed and see you next time.